Today we're going to be looking at likely one of the most impressive AI image generation models that runs offline, and in the time it takes me to finish this sentence, it is very likely that we will be able to have a generated image. This is one of the fastest offline image generation models I've ever seen, and it runs within 24 gigs of video RAM. Okay, very interesting, and not entirely what I'd expected when typing this prompt in, but again, the core point of this and what makes this so cool is that aside from having a very open license, this runs entirely locally and offline within a single 24 gigabyte video card, and as we can see right here on a mobile 5090, it generates images in 9 seconds. So Z Image Turbo is a new image model from Let's call it Alibaba. It's from their Tongi lab, which is within Alibaba, but I think for the purpose of this video, we can be a bit more generalization like. Uh, I have no idea what I said. Regardless of that, this is a 6 billion parameter model, and they say this is a distilled version of Z image that matches or exceeds leading competitors with only 8 NFEs, number of function evaluations. It offers sub second inference latency on enterprise grade H800 GPUs, which very likely most of us do not have access to, but more importantly, it fits comfortably within 16 gig consumer devices. Now, I'm seeing it take up like closer to 24, but I kind of just carelessly ran the code here and didn't try to look into any optimization, so your mileage may vary with that. Now, the, cool, the whole cool part of this is really just how fast it is, at least in terms of what very much interests me. A lot of folks, when I recently posted the Flux 2 dev video, had commented saying I needed to take a look at this, and I did not quite realize how impressive this was compared to anything that currently exists. Now, I would assume this to be more of a competitor for the currently unreleased Flux Klein model, which they say is going to be Apache 2.0, but this is completely open. Well, completely open, meaning like if you scroll up right here, it says Apache 2.0. Obviously, different folks have different kind of definitions of what constitutes completely open, but really, this is quite, quite interesting, and if you go on the Stable Diffusion subreddit, a lot of folks have found this to be relatively lacking in any form of guardrail, which does appeal to a large subset of the individuals who like using this. So, really, there seems to be a lot of kind of very interesting technical research that has gone into making this so impressive. I think maybe we'll probably just spend more time going ahead and looking at some generations, being that there does seem to be some relatively complicated kind of machine learning things that go into actually making this so fast and things of the sort. Obviously, there is a research paper which talks about some of the ways in which they actually made this so quick, but still able to generate lucid results, especially considering the speed in which it does generate these images. Two other things that I quickly do want to mention, one of them is that there is going to be an upcoming image editing version of this, so currently it does seem that this is only text to image, which personally I prefer because I don't do as much image editing stuff, but that will be something a lot of folks have great interest in. And then the second one is what I like to call clickbait justification because as we see right here in the human preference evaluation in the AI arena, this does actually score higher than any other open source image generation model. So it would be prudent to say, is this the best open source image generation model? Now I've been playing with this for a while now and something I find that I very much like is it can just take random natural language sentence like prompts like this and still output relatively decent results. Obviously there's a large subset of folks who like to have more kind of prompts like the type of camera, the type of lens. I'm just not that person, I quite frankly, don't know enough about cameras or don't have as much interest in that stuff. So I like doing natural language prompts. And as we can see, that did just basically generate a photo of a motherboard, which has varying levels of realism to it. But I think we can, uh, <laughs> when I was generating images, it was quite disturbing. Although, I mean, if you have one of those AIO CPU coolers that has an LCD on it, I suppose you could put a face on it like that. But overall, the point of this initial, at least, slop testing is just to show that this can actually produce results decently without having to go into the prompt engineering or crafting. So let's just kind of keep going. So a movie poster for Agent Poopman, today or now, and basically after this one I will just full screen the web interface here so we can get a better focal point of... Um, okay, well, that is <laughs> definitely not what I expected. It does seem quite familiar to um, some movies. Let's just go ahead and say um, uh, human. And, and again, it's it really is quite a lot of fun. The speed coupled with its ability to just take like one sentence prompts makes this a lot of fun to just kind of rapid fire play around with. And it does become 
today or now, human. And again, I'm purposely doing like very weird prompts and things right now because this is like, <laughs> it's just fast and it's fun to play with. So not having to wait a few minutes per prompt makes this much easier to experiment. Agent or now human. There, this is, this is pretty much exactly what I'd hoped to get. And we can see overall for an image generation model that runs locally at this speed, I'm not seeing anything crazy out of sorts. Obviously some of the text is not perfect, but the tie, the clothing, the suit, the glasses, all of this seems relatively grounded in some level of realism. I do of course have some better quality prompts, so let's just go ahead and try a screenshot from the 2007 game, RuneScape 2007. I would not expect this to get most if not all elements of this correct, meaning I don't know. Okay, and it does seem like this took a negligible bit longer, so we see that this took about a second more. This is quite interesting because this generated result does look very, very similar to the flux2.dev result that we had received. So it did go ahead and kind of do as we asked. The full rune, of course, is kind of, so this is less of a <laughs> RuneScape-esque result. It does look reminiscent more of the original RuneScape. We do have hit splats, um, full rune, and then fit splat. They are fighting, they are contained in the wilderness, and at least they do have full plate armor. So overall, again, you can't really expect this to perhaps have a lot of world knowledge in terms of knowing specific niche games and things like that. Now let's try an Agent Poop Man movie poster, but with a prompt that has more prompt enhancement in line with what an image model would excel at picking out. So again, this seems to take a little longer. Very interesting. Again, the these results are very similar to the flux to dev results and obviously that's using the same exact prompt so okay we do have the kind of chrome style text that would indicate an action spy movie maybe from like the early 2000s look he is in a bathroom he is holding what i would assume to be some form of plunging device and obviously the tuxedo the bow tie the sunglasses and then the random artifacting around it which would indicate um, something in action or something of the sort. We'll try another movie poster, but for an action movie titled, I have come to purchase a GPU. And then if you're interested in more specifics of the prompt, I'll just kind of leave it on screen as this generates. Very interesting. Okay. That is a rather, this is perhaps like what the 7090 or 8090 may look like if GPU size keeps continuing to grow, which, you know, I'm down for. Um, interesting. Something seems to be on fire. There is a cyberpunk neon theme at least in the background here and the way the gpu is just kind of hitched onto the backpack is quite interesting and our uh, what i would assume to be protagonist does seem to be dressed the part for an action movie so overall not bad and it kept the same kind of font style for the action type movie of course, one of my favorites, the Retro Land Party. So this will be a flash photography shot taken during a land party in 1998. That's actually pretty good. And you can see, just for the speed and everything, considering the quality of the results, these obviously are not like nano banana quality, but the trade-off here is it's running locally and it's extremely, extremely fast. So that's what really impresses me about this. We have four individuals, which the prompt did dictate. They do look to be in a basement area and there is some flash photography here. And there's some retro CRTs, cans. I do see a small snippet of pizza, which the keyboard seems to be resting upon, which is an interesting choice. So here's going to be a test of uh, a group of individuals at a dinner table, and one of them has just had an embarrassing incident occur, and we're trying to see if it can reflect that on their facial expression here. Okay, yes, but perhaps... All right, this just looks like a very... Okay. <laughs> All right, this is probably where this video is just going to descend into chaos because, you know, we're all interested in seeing certain things. So we're seeking to have a movie poster here for a movie with a specific title relating to humanoid robotics. Very interesting. We do seem <laughs> to have some form of action style movie. Uh, the robot does seem to be a main... Okay, so this definitely took it a bit more literally how I had phrased the prompt. So this obviously... This is quite terrifying, at least considering how the um, future may unfold. You know, it does seem, of course, like these two have found themselves in a scuffle of sorts. <laughs> I think I'm going to do everyone a favor and not show it. It was disgusting. It was extremely disgusting. I'm going to refresh this page so that goes away. Good. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, let's try things that are more SFW. Here's one that we'll all probably enjoy. I'm asking it to generate a photo for the generic YouTube thumbnail face, which is obviously, you know, fairly common. Okay, uh, let's just try that one again. <laughs> the generic YouTube thumbnail facial expression. 
All right, not as surprised. Uh, okay, you're, we're just going to keep adding things into this prompt until we get what we expect to get, which is obviously like the... <laughs> Hey, you know, it works. Go look at my videos before I started doing that and then after and like you can see why people justifiably do it. That is pretty much exactly what I'd hope to get. Very good. <laughs> I'll try to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically freestyle a prompt so I will just craft it as it comes to me. So we have just given it a sort of freestyled story of our favorite character, Stevie Slappis. And I am quite curious to see how it interprets this into a, I should maybe have said storyboard. Huh. Okay. This is kind of, this is giving me like RoboCop vibes, which RoboCop, you know, I was forced to watch it. I was extremely, extremely disturbed by that movie. It was really, really disturbing. This gives me those sorts of vibes. So it does seem, of course, that our protagonist, Stevie Slappis, did uh, undoubtedly return to Austin to find his love, Johnny Bot 49 and the number <laughs> did the number very well right here. Interesting. And it does have a vintage aesthetic graininess to this photo as well. Let's do a storyboard. And again, I want to kind of just reiterate why I find this model to be so fun. It's because of the speed. You can basically, if you can run this locally, obviously, you can just kind of do like quick succession prompts like this and have a lot of fun with it and whatever you want. Okay, very interesting. So there's Stevie Slappis. And then I would assume that's Johnny Bot 49 with a perhaps a specific type of okay uh, storyboard for this. We'll just see. We'll try to get different styles for a. <laughs> I do want to try a digital infographic as well. Oh, cool. So <laughs> we got Stevie Slappis, and then we have the Johnny Bot 49. This one <laughs> this is actually pretty good. Uh, just forget for a second the hilarity of the prompt. The actual elements here are quite decent, at least. And it does have that very grainy vintage aesthetic. Okay, I'll do the last one, but I'll say the year is 2056. And then we'll see how it changes, because at least it will likely omit some of the graininess, and then we'll get to see how it would do with a more futuristic style. <laughs> okay, so Johnny Bait, 49... Perhaps the cousin of Johnny Bod? We'll try this infographic for the official navigation map of the Flat Earth Disk, and the reason we're trying this is because it has a lot of static elements defined in it that we'll want to see if the model can actually get, as well as just being digital style. Okay, this seems to have... <laughs> here be drag voice instead of dragons. Okay, Dardell and Void, here be dragons. Okay, got it there. We have center point. The Earth does look relatively correct in terms of how it is at least laid out. Uh, official navigation map, uh, the Flat Earth Disc, 2024 edition. You're in loink. <laughs> so text, obviously, is not the strong point, but the strong point would definitely be visual elements, not text. Very good. That is pretty much exactly what I was envisioning with this prompt, so that's well done. <laughs> okay. That's actually... It's not bad. The track suits do look well. Um, obviously there's really only uh, two obvious humanoids here and the car is somewhat visible in the background. Okay. So, uh, all right. It <laughs> took these at some form of shoe to be honest with you. It did a better job on the shoe than I expected. So perhaps we could try. So I'm going to try something to try to confuse it. I've written Fender Les Paul, which is wrong. Fender has a Stratocaster guitar and Gibson has a Les Paul guitar. So I want to see which one it looks more like here. Okay, that just went full Les Paul. So that would be a Gibson Les Paul and not at all a Fender product. Uh, overall, how many strings are here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Proper. That's actually not too bad. This seems more like a vintage model considering how the pickups look aged nickel of sorts. Regardless, not too bad. And again, I'm just, I don't even know what I'm doing at this point. I'm just typing like item names into it. Not bad. Looks like some form of, I don't know. But it does have Windows 11, so. Ugh. Portrait photo taken during a bar fight in the year 2008. Okay, um, kind of more interesting. That's a pretty cool looking device. <laughs> okay, I can't even show that. I, I can't show any part of... <laughs> All right, so this is going to be the last test. Just a movie poster for subscribe or else and we'll see how it comes up. I would assume this to be some form of action movie result here. 
Very good. Subscribe or else. That is quite a fascinating road sign. Okay. Yeah. Seems relatively fitting for subscribe or else. So that's going to conclude our probably quicker testing video of Z Image Turbo. This model is quite entertaining. If you want to see more of its, I suppose, raw capabilities, a lot of folks have been posting on the Stable Diffusion subreddit showcasing this. And again, anyone who has, apparently they say here, a 16 gig VRAM consumer card can hypothetically just go and download this and play with it themselves. I would honestly highly recommend it because the speed makes it so much fun to play with. You're not sitting there for minutes at a time waiting for results to be generated, which makes it a lot of fun to play with and relatively like quickly as well. Obviously the image edit version is going to be released soon and assuming that that is something that can run within a relatively small amount of VRAM that could be extremely extremely interesting in and of itself but overall this model is fantastic. You can see some of the likely cherry picked best results right here but overall it has very decent quality especially when considering the speed and relatively low resource that's required to use it. So I wanted to do some form of testing of this just to show folks the existence of it if nothing more as it really is a truly amount of fun. I mean it's a Friday you could have some friends over on a Friday night and run this and you'll probably end up having some laughs which I uh, fully intend to do tonight but regardless of that that is going to wrap up our first look and test of Z Image Turbo if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments thanks for watching